Joining me to talk about all of this is former presidential candidate Bernie Sanders and author of the new book, Our Revolution. Senator Sanders, thank you so much for joining me. Let me start with Cuba. In President Obama's statement on Fidel Castro's death, he said, quote, we offer condolences to Fidel Castro's family and our thoughts and prayers are with the Cuban people. Is it appropriate for the leader of the free world to offer condolences of a brutal dictator who killed his own people as well as Americans? Well, I think what we have seen in the last number of years is an improved relationship between the United States of America and Cuba. The United States of America has relations with China. We've had relations with brutal dictatorships all over the world. The goal right now is to see that we can improve our relationships with the people of Cuba, uh, to do what we can to improve their economy, uh, and to uh, make sure that the younger generation does better than their uh, older generation. So you're okay with him offering condolences. If you were president, would you have said something similar? Yeah. Yes, I would have. Okay, thank you. Let's let's talk about uh, politics here and uh, what's going on in Wisconsin. Yesterday, the Clinton campaign joined an effort started by Green Party candidate Jill Stein for an official recount in Wisconsin. Hillary Clinton's gen uh, general counsel said that they were doing this without any actionable evidence of hacking the voting system. Do you support that recount as well? It's taking place. The Green Party has the legal right to do it. We have recounts probably almost every election there's a recount. Uh, no one expects there to be profound change, but there's nothing wrong with going through the process. The issue right now, it seems to me at this particular moment in American history, is whether Donald Trump is going to keep faith with the promises that he made to the American people. As you'll remember during the campaign, Donna, he talked about the fact that he would take on the pharmaceutical industry and lower drug prices in this country. And I'm a little bit nervous, but I haven't heard too much about that since he's been elected. He said that Medicare should be able to negotiate prices with the drug companies, that we should be able to import cheaper medicine uh, from Canada and other countries. I look forward to doing that. He made a very big deal about saying that he was the only Republican candidate in the primary to say that he would not cut Social Senator Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Let's see if he keeps his word, and many of us are going to demand that he does keep the promises that he made. I, I know you will, but just to follow up on the, uh, on the recount, uh, Trump senior advisor Kellyanne Conway tweeted this. She said, look who can't accept the election results. Hillary Clinton supporters Anna, call for You know, vote. this is exactly the issue. Nobody cares. The Green Party has the legal right. Republicans have requested, I think the governor of North Carolina right now mm -hmm. is thinking about doing a recount. That's a legal right. They do it. Uh, I don't think that Hillary Clinton, who got two million more votes than Mr. Trump in the popular election, thinks that it's going to transform the election. But do people have the legal right to do it? Yeah, we do. The real issue now, in my view, is to focus on what we do to rebuild a disappearing middle class, mm -hmm. deal with income and wealth inequality. Let's focus on the issues of importance you, to the American people. You mentioned that Hillary Clinton is now nearing a two million vote lead in the popular vote, but she obviously right. has shown a solid loss in the Electoral College. Do you think the Electoral College system should be reexamined? I do. I'll tell you why. I mean, on the surface, you just said it. Uh, we have one candidate who got two million more votes than the other candidate, but she is not going to be sworn in as, as president. And I think on the surface, that's a little bit weird. The second thing that bothers me is that, as everybody know, knows, uh, that during the campaign, we have states, California, New York, uh, and many others that are traditionally Democratic, yet a whole lot of states that are traditionally Republican. The needs and the people of those states are ignored during the political process. And then end, what ends up happening is campaigns basically are about 16, 17 states, battleground states in this country. And I think that's unfair to the other 30 plus states that also would like to be participating uh, in the political process. Senator, let's t talk about rebuilding the Democratic Party. You have endorsed Minnesota Congressman Keith Ellison to be DNC right. chair. Uh, New York Times is reporting that the Obama White House is looking for a more moderate candidate. What do you make of that? Well, I think Keith is the candidate that we need, and I'll tell you why. I mean, if you assess where the Democratic Party is, and that is the Republicans have won the White House, the U.S. Senate, the U.S. House. I think they control about two-thirds of the governor's chairs in this country. In the last eight years, the Democrats have lost over 900 legislative seats mm -hmm. around the country in state legislatures. I think it's time to take a reassessment of the purpose of, of where the Democratic Party is and where it wants to go. And I think essentially what we knew, need to do right now is to become a grassroots party, which is what Keith Ellison believes, open the doors to working people, open the doors to young people, less emphasis 
on raising large sums of money, more emphasis on bringing new blood into the political party. And I think that uh, if you look at the issues uh, that we talk about, whether or not we're going to give tax breaks to billionaires as the Republicans want, whether we're going to expand Social Security, making public colleges and universities tuition-free, deal with climate change. Those are issues that the vast majority of the American people support. We should be winning their votes. Got to figure out why we're not right now. And you've been talking about this around the country, about how to move forward. I want to play something that you said in Boston last week. Take a listen. It is not good enough for somebody to say, I'm a woman, vote for me. What we need is a woman who has the guts to stand up to Wall Street, to the insurance companies, to the drug companies, to the fossil fuel industry. Senator, was that a dig at Hillary Clinton? No, it really wasn't. What it was is to say that, in my view, we need more women in elected position. We need more African Americans, more Latinos. We need a more diversified, diverse government. But at the same time, it is not good enough to say, oh, uh, somebody is a Latino, somebody is a white, somebody is a black. What do they stand for? And the major issue, then, uh, it, to my mind right now, is the fact that we have a growth in the number of billionaires, mm -hmm. that we're moving toward oligarchy, where a hand full of very, very wealthy people control not only our economic life, but our political Sen life. How do we turn that around? Senator so we want more diversity, but we need to have people have the guts to stand up to big money interests. Nancy Pelosi is facing a leadership battle this week within the House caucus. Uh, she has uh, at least some opposition, including from uh, Congressman Tim Ryan. Do you think it is time to replace Nancy Pelosi? I will leave that to the, uh, I was in the House for 16 exactly. years. I'm not in the House right now. I'll leave that to the members of the House. Do you think, though, Nancy that is a friend of mine. I think she has done a very good job. But I think that is an issue the people in the House will have to decide. But you've been very outspoken about what the party you just were needs to do to move forward. Do you think that she is the right leader to rebuild the party that you envision? Well, again, you know, you're going to have fewer than 200 people who make that decision. Those are the Democrats in the House. And... They will have that debate, and they will make that decision, not for me to make. Senator Bernie Sanders, thank you so much for your time this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dennis.